Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Penthouse Conversations. And today we are in uh, in the heart of Tuscany, uh, in uh, specifically in the city of Siena and in the heart of the uh, main square of city of Siena. I'm really honored to be hosted here in Palazzo Sansedoni. Uh, at the uh, Fondazione Monte dei Paschi di Siena by the Managing Director Marco Forte. Thank you Marco for giving your time and being with us here today. Thank you to you and welcome to this wonderful space. Thank you, thank you. Marco, uh, we would like to learn more about uh, the history of uh, Fondazione Monte dei Paschi di Siena. We all know that Siena has a very strong history and especially during the Renaissance period and the Middle Age period. So, um, when the Foundation Monte di Paschi was born? Yes, the foundation uh, was born in 1995 uh, during uh, the privatization process of the Monte Paschi Bank. You know, it's the oldest bank in the world. It was founded in 1472. Uh, during this process, as a result of the privatization, the state uh, um, transferred the entire state, the entire ownership of the bank uh, to the foundation. Uh, afterwards, the foundation began to reduce its stake in the bank uh, by placing on the public markets. In uh, 2001, the foundation uh, became uh, a non-profit organization, totally private, with full autonomy and uh, uh, with our financial and non-financial assets because the foundation is an endowment uh, uh, with financial assets and uh, um, real estates uh, with revenues we finance the philanthropy mm -hmm. so this is an amazing you um, you have uh, discussed explained the uh, two beautiful amazing um, ways of uh, helping the city, helping the community and giving back uh, and doing the philanthropy. Uh, going back to the history of um, Banca Monte di Pasca di Siena, it was founded in 1472 and this city was a republic. I am so amazed how at that time, in so ancient time in the Middle East, we, we, you know, we cannot even imagine being there and helping to the people of the city, to the community and creating this uh, network of uh, givers and you, they were really vis revisionary rulers. Yes, of course. And you still continue this legacy and giving back, supporting exactly. the art and culture. Exactly. As the bank in the past, the foundation with the revenues finance philanthropy. Uh, the mission of foundation is to support the economic, social and uh, I'd say overall sustainable development of uh, the the province, the, the town of Siena and the province. Uh, our territory is uh, um, the province of Siena. Our mission uh, is to support the economic, social and especially, I'd say, uh, sustainable development uh, of our territory. The community of the foundation is uh, the town of Siena and uh, the province. Uh, following our mission, we have identified uh, three main areas uh, education, research and uh, uh, technology transfer is the first one, uh, culture and tourism the second, and uh, um, welfare and inclusive society as another oh, sector. Really, really. And, uh, Following these three main areas, we finance initiatives and projects. In particular, in particular uh, right now, we are focused on uh, life sciences. Uh, because you know that in Siena there is the most important, one of the most important sites in the world about life sciences. And there is a, a very important research at the moment on COVID-19. Uh, our scientists are working on a drug uh, against the COVID-19. Of course, we 
are confident that uh, in the next months uh, there will be success about that. So you are telling, uh, I think it's a uh, worldwide top amazing breaking news that we are learning mm -hmm. from. And it's amazing that in Siena we still have so many researchers and scientists living around in beautiful Tuscany, around these beautiful palaces of, of full of Baroque and Renaissance arts and production of uh, organic uh, wine and olive oil food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in Siena is a mixture of uh, culture, uh, arts tradition, Italian tradition, uh, science, finance, uh, and food, of course. <laughs> The, the traditions. So this city has a very strong bond uh, by creating the financing and history and banking history. This, um, the oldest bank still uh, existing in the world, and this beautiful, beautiful place, especially you know the Palio. You guys, you can uh, search Palio di Siena. It happens uh, twice a year in the main square of Siena. Uh, this square is uh, round shaped. And uh, the city is divided in contradas. Seventeen contradas. Yeah. And uh, this race, uh, of course, uh, that it's not uh, an initiative for tourists. It's, it's initially a, for cities. For cities, the <laughs> locals. Yes, of course. And normally every year in um, July um, and August, uh, full of tourists. Uh, you know, you cannot find a room in, in the city. I hope that we can come back uh, back again soon to our normal life and, and enjoy this beautiful horse race. So this is one, uh, one more point that I would like to add because you are watching the Palio exactly from the top yes. of the sphere. Yeah? Yes, I think it's the best place. This, this palace, this building is the best place to, to watch the Palio. Yeah. Yeah. Marco, uh, I would like to learn more about history of Palazzo San Sidoni. And this is an amazing place. Who has uh, originated, built this uh, palace and how many uh, centuries it's still uh, existing in, uh, in, in, in uh, Siena? Yes, um, this palace since 1995 is the, the seat of the, the foundation. Uh, this building, uh, the origin of this building uh, is in the 13th century. Mm -hmm. in the Middle Ages, substantially, and there was uh, a big expansion uh, with respect to original uh, structure. Uh, there was a, a, a great expansion, especially in the 17th and the 18th uh, century. Now, Marco, I would like to learn, uh, especially for the people uh, listening to this channel and watching this video, a um, little bit of history of Palazzo San Sudani and its rich cultural heritage and your art collection. And who were the San Sudani family and they have built this amazing, big, huge palace in, on the main square of Siena. The origin of the palace uh, is in the Middle Age, in the 13th century, mm -hmm. and uh, afterwards, during the centuries, uh, there was an expansion, a great expansion. Uh, especially in the 17th and 18th century. Uh, so it's a mixture of, uh, of styles. Uh, of course, the most recent ones prevail and uh, uh, we are talking about Barocco. There is a, a beautiful uh, chapel uh, with, uh, in Barocco style and neoclassical. Uh, in these wonderful spaces, we have uh, uh, our uh, art collection. We made it uh, in the last years uh, buying uh, masterpieces, uh, paintings, and sculptures. Uh, of course, uh, these masterpieces are of uh, um, artists linked to Sinis' uh, way of, of work. Uh, so, we have uh, mm, arranged this art collection in our room. It's important to precise that uh, uh, this floor, the noble floor of the palace, is a museum open to visitors. And uh, we have arranged the art collection 
in different rooms uh, following uh, the, the history, in, starting from the 14th centuries uh, until to the 20th century. Uh, that's a special project in foundation about uh, the possibility to visit the uh, museum, the noble floor, uh, for the school, for the school of the province. Mm, uh, beautiful, for the children. Yes, children and guys and, uh, and uh, all the school. Uh, the project uh, started in, um, in 2015 and uh, every year, of course, not now because there is the emergency, uh, emergency situation. Uh, yeah. Yes, the COVID-19 situation. Uh, but uh, every year we uh, we host uh, one one thousand more students in these uh, this, uh, rooms, and uh, it's, uh, we are very um, eager to do that because uh, uh, the possibility to tell the history, the culture of Siena to the students by means of the master thesis and of course the history of the past. I think it's a good occasion of course to, to, uh, to make them uh, feel uh, the tradition, the arts and the culture of Siena. Part of the heritage and of course Siena was a very very powerful uh, republic in, in the Middle Ages. It was uh, the biggest financial center. Nonetheless, uh, the city uh, has also several popes at that time. No? Yes, of course. Kiji, uh, Piccolimini, uh, lots of noble families, uh, descendants became in the end the popes in, in Rome, in Vatican. So if you come to Siena, and uh, it's uh, one of the most places to visit and enjoy these amazing masterpieces and of artists from Siena and uh, um, the Republic of Siena from the Middle Ages period. Marco, uh, what are the top uh, masterpieces that really lies in the heart that is very you treasure a lot in this collection? Yeah. Of course, it's my personal opinion, but I think that the, the, the flagship masterpiece of our collection is the Santa Lucia uh, of San Di Pietro. Uh, we are talking about uh, uh, a painting of 1445 in the Renaissance period and uh, you can see that uh, it's a wonderful. And still, um, still they keep in the same shape, the original colors and uh, yes. the mood and the spirit of the artist. It's a, it's a, symbol, it's a symbol of uh, uh, the best of uh, Sinis art. Sinis art. With gold, okay. it's so wonderful. That's beautiful. So, uh, so guys, let's go and uh, see this wonderful painting. A really priceless masterpiece. We don't have um, only religious uh, subjects, and uh, for example, in the 17th century, uh, there is a, a good style about uh, since. Uh, Ars. Uh, in uh, that period, uh, Rutilio Manetti, for example, uh, was uh, a great painter. Uh, always, in my personal opinion, I think that the Marie Magdalene is a, is a good painting, is a, is a marvelous. <laughs> That's amazing. So, yeah. let's go uh, have a look at Santa Lucia and Marie Magdalene, the two top masterpieces that you can find in uh, Palazzo San Sebastiano in Siena. Marco, I'm really, really grateful for you helping me and appreciate really much that uh, you have given uh, time for us today to share uh, the history of uh, Fondazione Monte di Paschi di Siena. Thank you so much. Really. Thank you to you and uh, of course uh, uh, we look forward to hosting you, all of you, as soon as possible in Sierra. Hi everybody, thank you for watching this episode together uh, me and Marco. Uh, I would like to ask uh, you to follow me and subscribe this channel.
for more insights and information about Italian art and culture and heritage, its people, especially its people. Thank you. Thank you again. Bye.